Hello and welcome to MK Secrets of Neurophysiology. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is a series on my YouTube channel that will look at neurophysiology topics in depth. Today we're going to be continuing with Somatosensory System Part 3. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such videos every time I post. Drop a like, drop a comment, grab your piece of paper, grab your pen, and let's go. So in our previous review lectures, we covered um, aspects on receptors and neurons. We also looked at the sensory pathways, predominantly the ascending pathways. We looked at the sensory homunculus and we looked at the phenomenon of cortical plasticity. Now, in this last review lecture video on the somatosensory system and for us to close the chapter on the somatosensory system, we shall look at some CNS lesions. This is very important because you will use this information clinically when a patient comes in with spinal injury. You will use this information and it becomes very, very important, especially when someone has certain conditions such as a combined degenerative um, disease of the spinal cord or subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord. You may have also conditions like Tabes dorsalis, which may present with certain characteristic features. So it's very important that you pay attention to this lecture. Remember that a lesion is going to be a wound, a sore, or a damage to the body. So when you're talking about lesions in the somatosensory system, take note that they can happen at almost any point. And they can be caused by many things, including physical trauma or even other neuropathies like diabetes or even other medical conditions. And note, only the main lesions are going to be discussed here. This is not really an exhaustful uh, list. This is just going to be for the sake of your exams and for the sake of the important lesions that we're going to be seeing clinically. So here is a schematic of a high, what I like to call a high yield table of everything that we've covered in the past lectures summarized in one slide. Can you imagine that? So what do I mean? Here we have fine touch, tactile localization, tactile discrimination, vibration sensation, stereognosis, which are going to be carried by the Meisner's corpuscles and Meckel's disc. The first order neuron is going to be in the post, uh, a posterior nerve root uh, ganglion, and the fibers are going to be forming the fasciculus gracilis and the fasciculus cuneatus. The second order neurons are going to be arising from the cuneate uh, nucleus, as well as from the grasso nucleus. And of course, they're the fibers are going to be arcing internally, forming internal arcuate fibers that are eventually going to be synapsing on the ventral postural um, lateral nucleus of the thalamus and eventually reaching the sensory cortex. Then you have also uh, pressure, crude touch, temperature, uh, conscious kinesthetic sensation, subconscious kinesthetic sensation, as well as pain. So take your time to actually go through this high yield table. It will make a lot of sense and you will understand uh, what I am talking about. So... Here is, again, a schematic of the spinal cord, a cross-section of the different tracts. On one side here, you have the descending tracts, which are pretty much motor. I won't discuss them. On the other side here, you have the ascending tract. I've talked about the fasciculus gracilis. I've talked about the fasciculus cuneatus. And, of course, we have these other... Uh, Spinal tracts like the dorsal spinal cerebellum, the lateral spinal thalamic, ventral spinal cerebellum, spinal tectal, as well as the ventral spinal thalamic. Now, some general principles before we actually talk about the lesions. Number one, remember that damage to the dorsal column is going to be leading to ipsilateral loss of ability to detect light touch to detect vibration and to detect proprioception. So if you damage the dorsal column, it means that you're going to be losing the ability to um, detect these things that are going to be carried by the dorsal column. If you damage the uh, ventral lateral spinal um, pathway, these are going to be leading to contralateral uh, loss of pain, contralateral loss of sensation below the level of that lesion. And remember that all these damages are going to be affected below the level of the lesion. So it means that if T6 is affected, everything below T6 will not be carrying those sensations. If T4 is affected, everything below T4 will not be carrying those sensations. 
And remember that lesions that are going to be affecting the primary somatosensory cortex do not necessarily abolish the somatic sensation, though it may impair the ability to localize the stimuli. Then, of course, damage to the thalamus by an infarct, which is death of tissue because you cut off the blood supply, can actually lead to a loss of sensation. Because remember that the thalamus is going to be the relay center for both motor and sensory information. So the lesions that we'll talk about include injury to the dorsal nerve root, the stringomalia, the tapes dorsalis, subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord, amorphosynthesis. We're also going to be talking about bronze Sagat syndrome. So beginning with injury to the dorsal nerve root, remember that the dorsal nerve root is going to be consisting of purely sensory fibers, so purely afferent fibers. So this is going to be resulting in loss of all sensations, both those sensations that are going to be carried by the motor, uh, by the Dorsal column, sensations that are also going to be carried by the anterior lateral column. You're also going to be losing muscle tone, so which is a motor function. So you lose all your sensations, you lose all your reflexes, you lose your muscle tone. And there's going to be marked weakness in the movements of the parts because the higher centers concerned with the reflex control of the posture are deprived of the afferent impulses of the joints because your brain needs to know what's the starting position, where are my joints are before the muscles can begin to contract. So you lose almost all the sensation. Then talking about stringomyelia, this is actually a very rare disease and where there's going to be excessive overgrowth of neuroglial tissue. Remember, neuroglial cells are the supporting cells of the um, nervous system. So this is actually going to be followed by cavities forming in the gray matter around the spinal cord. And this disease actually um, involves the cervical enlargement of the cord most frequently. And of course, uh, mostly there's going to be loss of pain as well as loss of temperature with retention of other uh, sensations um, along with motor functions that are going to be discussed much later on in the course of the syllabus. Then talking about tapes dorsalis, this is usually a consequence of syphilis. So it occurs by uh, what is known as bilateral degeneration, which is breakdown of the posterior nerve roots and the posterior fasciculi uh, or funiculi especially the fasciculus uh, gracilis. So remember that if the fasciculus gracilis are gone, so it means you're going to be losing your um, uh, loss of uh, pain sensation. So there's going to be loss and or decreased uh, pain sensation. There's going to be loss of deep sensations on the same side, as well as those that are below the lesion. So there's going to be loss of position sensation. There's going to be loss of tactile localization and discriminative touch. There's going to be loss of reflexes. There's also going to be sensory ataxia, so which is pretty much lack of coordinated voluntary uh, movements. Then, of course, there's lightening pain, which is intermittent attacks due to stimulation of pain fibers that are found in the dorsal nerve root in the initial stages of the disease. Then with subacute uh, combined degeneration of the spinal cord, this is obviously going to be associated with pernicious anemia, so a lack of intrinsic factor, which leads to a lack of vitamin B12 deficiency. So it means that there will be an anemia of some sort. So there's also going to be bilateral degeneration of the white fibers of the dorsal column, as well as the lateral column of the spinal cord, especially in the lumbar as well as the sacral segments. So this is going to be leading to a loss of positioning and vibration sensation in the lower extremities. If it's affecting the left side, it will be pretty much on the left side because the fibers have not yet crossed over. If it's affecting the right side, it will be on the right side. So the signs, there will also be signs of upper motor neuron lesions, which we will talk about later on, such as bilateral spasticity, exaggerated tendon reflexes, as well as a positive Babinski sign. Then with amorphosynthesis, this is just going to be occurring when the somatosensory area has been removed. So when it is removed from one side of the brain, the person loses the ability to recognize complex objects and also complex forms that are felt on the opposite side of the body. Because remember that the, the impulses that are going to be carried from the left side of the body are going to be projected to the right side of the cortex. The impulses that are carried from the right side of the body are going to be um, projected to the left side of the cortex and he or she is going to be losing uh, almost um, most of the sensations of form uh, of his or her own body of course uh, as well as body parts on the opposite side so they forget that the opposite side is actually there so they may actually forget to use these other sides for their motor function as well so when they're feeling an object the person tends to recognize the object only on the side um, on one side the side that's not affected and they forget that the other side even exists. Then last but not least is brown Sager syndrome, which is one of the important conditions where examiners like to jump on. So if you actually transect the spinal cord entirely, all sensations and all motor functions distal or inferior to this sensation are going to be lost. 
uh, or they're going to be blocked. But if the spinal cord is transected uh, on only one side, so this is brown cigar syndrome is happening when you have hemisection or partial section of the spinal cord. So let me actually show you a black screen for this so that you can actually understand what I'm talking about. So let's say, not a laser pen, but rather a pen. Uh, let's say you have this as your spinal cord, all right? This is your spinal cord. You have, a, it's going to be growing like that, a segment. So if you have, this is your spinal cord and you transect it completely, complete transection. It means that everything below this level is lost. But remember that in this spinal cord that you have, you have the dorsal column in this area here, and you have your anterolateral column here in this area there. So hemisection of the spinal cord is, let's say we cut it in half here and remove this side here on the left side here. Okay, so this is the left side that has been removed. What is the left side going to be carrying? It's going to be carrying dorsal dorsal um rather dorsal column sensations on the left side so it means that here there'll be loss of dorsal column sensations on this affected side the temperature and pain on this affected side are not going to be affected remember that they cross over so they would have already crossed over before they can actually be affected by this so it means that on the left side, they'll be retaining pain and uh, sensations that are carried by the anterolateral column, but there'll be loss of dorsal column sensations. On the right side, on the other hand here, the dorsal column here is okay. So there will be maintained um, transmission of the dorsal column uh, sensations, but the ones that are coming from the right side, remember that the anterolateral sensations coming on the right side are supposed to cross over and be carried on this side that's affected. So it means that here there'll be loss of anterolateral sensations, there'll be loss of pain, there'll be loss of temperature. I really hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, please play over the video and listen to it very, very slowly, writing down each and every single point. But let's read what it says. So here are the effects of transection can be predicted from the knowledge of the cord fibers in the tract. And of course, sensations of pain, heat, and cold on the opposite side are lost. The sensation of cold, pain, heat on the same side are retained. Then on sensations of that are transmitted in the dorsal column on the same side are lost, while as those that are transmitted on the opposite side that is not affected are retained. I really hope that makes sense. So please take your time to learn about brown Seger syndrome because it's something that you can be asked on your exams. Thank you for spending your time to listen to the somatosensory system. I hope you really learned a lot about the somatosensory system, receptors, neurons, the sensory pathways, as well as the CNS and a peripheral nervous system. Neurons affecting, or lesions rather, affecting the somatosensory system. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such videos every time I post. Drop a like, drop a comment. Until next time, my name is Dr. Moses Kazan.